Ay, ay, ay. Give, jerk, what, would you like to give Kakanin a hug? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Right where we want him. Hey, now, let's go. Hey now, boys. Hey, what the hell is this? What? Did, okay, did Jerk just like... Whoa, 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 whoa. I feel like Jerk like totally... Dude, did you hijack my opener? What the uh, hell is this? So what that is... What it see, is? If, you, if you're not part of the Discord server, <laughs> you gotta join. Um, <laughs> Hit up Hockey Jerk for the uh, admittance pass. Yeah, so there's, uh, you know, every now and again, you know, one of our every one of now our buddies. And again. Dude, every other day they make fun of me and, you know, go no, ahead. No, you know, you, you were just one of a few who are on the list. Um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, if you're reading the chat live with us, you know, you'll see Molasses, clearly a member of the server and understands the reference. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, every now and again, a, a an innocuous seeming photo will find its way on the internet, and and one of our buddies, Tiger, will say, "You know what? I'm feeling inspired." And <laughs> all right, that's where you get that. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> there's some there's some good ones. You know, I'll uh, maybe I'll have to I'll have to go through Discord see if I can't find some of the oldies and and you know share them. Share them all in one area so that they can be viewed for public consumption. <sighs> all right. So with that, smart asses. <laughs> welcome back to the unfiltered, unedited, uncensored commercial free sharks podcast. That is the Pucknologist here on Teal Town USA. Remember, you can keep us commercial free. Uh, you know what? Fuck the super chat option. <laughs> I'm just saying. Forget all right. It. No, because like YouTube takes like 45% of that. So if you want to help us keep you know, stay commercial free, hit us up on Venmo. We appreciate it at Teal Town USA. If you're new to the cast though, remember hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. Leave your take in the comment section of the video. If you're not with us in the live chat and if you're listening to us on the, uh, what the retro, whatever, <laughs> if it's on your favorite podcast app, hit subscribe there. And if you're using Apple podcast, please leave us that review. Oh boy! If you're uh, a fan of the uh, Bedard tanking, it was a it was a decent week, but you're a little pissed off that the Sharks actually beat Arizona. So what ha what had happened was <laughs> the Sharks played three games this week, picking up two of a possible six points, going one and two, a win over the Yotes, a loss against the Kings, and then an absolute embarrassing rinse by the Oilers. So forty four games in, the Sharks are thirteen. 23 and eight 34 points in 44 games. Yikes. Still seventh in the pack. Okay. None of those numbers have changed over the last month. So why talk about it? But so what you're saying is that <laughs> the sharks have been bad all year, had another bad week and are therefore still bad. <laughs> but I think you've nailed it. All right, everybody. Hey, it was a great show and we'll see you. <laughs> so we'll we'll Puck see. Puck knowledge take over next week. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. Is the is the dialogue going to change all that much? No, probably not. Probably like not. On, like I <laughs> I don't know if you're. This is a completely different tangent. I don't know if you're. <laughs> I don't know if you're watching that show on Netflix, Kaleidoscope, where you can. I am you not. Can watch, but I'm interested. You can watch. You know, you can watch the episodes <clears throat> in any order, kind of thing. All right. I I, I feel oh, like interesting idea. It's very interesting. Yeah, we we've watched the first two. I think there's seven or eight. Uh, not the first two, but we've watched two of them. And uh, you know, I feel like this year you could listen to our our podcasts in the form of the show Kaleidoscope, where you just get all the YouTube links for every podcast we've done this year. How many ever we've done? I don't know if it's twenty or twenty four. How whatever we're at at this point. Uh, just watch them in any order, and you're you're gonna get it. You know, <laughs> like you're, like there's you're you're not gonna hear anything where it's like, man, you know, if I had started from the beginning, would I get that? No, 
You won't. <laughs> I, just, I just love the fact that I've been so painted as a, oh, he's such an EK hater. And it's like, no, I'm just a guy who wants to see a player live up to the contract. But Well, you know, so you're familiar with the term 24-hour news cycle, right? Sure. So in the Discord server, there's the about 20? a 60, it's like a 60-second news cycle. Oh, it feels like a 24-week one with this. So like, <laughs> so like after this, like there was already a, a litany of other things that were covered. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to follow us on social media, there it all is. YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, just search Teal Town USA. We're we're there. Oh yo yo. Dude. D oh, can you take care of the chat? Yeah. All right. Ah oh, God. There's always gonna be that one guy. All right. So the Sharks win their first ever game at Bowl Cut Arena. I'm sorry. Mullet arena, whatever. More mental errors and blown coverage leads to another loss against LA, all culminating with an absolute curb stomping at home versus the Edmonton Oilers. Over the last 10 games, dude, three, five, and two, but only two wins in the last 10 at SAP. That is just a kick in the smalls. It's right where we want them. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, I know, like, I, you know, I, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday about this, and it's we we agree that like yes, like it's very frustrating and on some level depressing to see the Sharks consistently losing, right? But at the same time, we like we what we've talked about all along is is where are your expectations? Like if this was a stacked roster that was falling apart, like that's one thing. But like oh, here comes another douchebag in the chat. Like you know when you have. Um, you know, a team that puts out maybe the 27th best roster and then they play like the 27th <laughs> best team. What's the problem? It's not a big leap to make. And, and, and we knew all along, like we, you know, we knew the roadmap for this season. Like, you know, I don't think anybody is really that naive. And so it's kind of just... Yeah, it, it sucks. It feels like a wasted year, but you kind of just have to, I think, look at the bigger picture and say, okay, you know, if we, if we're like, we've already been, I say we, the, you know, the Sharks have been shitty for this is now the fourth year in a row that they've been bad. And, you know, is it going to take another year or two? And then they'll have a stretch where they're really, really good. I kind of think it's the trade off you got to take, you know? <sighs> You're right there. And, um, Puck guy, I see you in the chat helping out. I so appreciate that. I don't understand what it is. Are are we that awesome <laughs> that we are just like, oh, let's go mess with you their should, podcast. You should change the live chat back to subscriber only. Yeah, I think I might have to because at least it'll boost those numbers, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to discuss Couture's optimism about the second half run. and uh, That's an interesting word to use there. Uh, well, I'm just saying. Uh, reports on what Mike Greer would like to start the negotiations off <laughs> getting easy. I'm sorry. I can't get through that with this, with a straight face because <laughs> the report was so ridiculously silly. Uh, frustration setting in for, I'm going to assume Kevin LeBanc, but obviously Noah Gregor, but let's start in Arizona again. Sharks get the first win ever because it's the first time ever they played at Mullet Arena. Kakinen would get the start in this one, and Arizona came into this on a five-game losing streak, which, of course, makes everybody go, oh, well, the Sharks, nobody knows how to fix a losing streak for a team like the Sharks. I think we even said that, like, the fact that they had lost five in a row, like, you, I think we had even said that nature would have healed for them. You oh, know? Dude, we, we were very much like, oh, trap game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But uh, Swift Shark, for whatever reason, still stays golden. You'll remember. We've still not heard from them. Dude, yeah, but the, he said if when they lose to Arizona, he'll donate 50 to the pie. Now, the whole thing, he didn't say when, so I'm, ju I'm just going to hold him to that. Like, it could be three years from now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and the thing is, like like that. Can you flip that graphic up again, real quick? Oh sure. So you look at the top right there, October sixteenth, twenty twenty two. That was the three months ago. 
Yeah. To literally three months ago tomorrow. <laughs> and they have not been back to clarify or to say, hey, we'll see. It's going to be fun. Like none of that. So I'm, 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 <laughs> it, it, you know, if Unsolved Mystery wants to come and do an episode, I mean, you know, because we haven't seen Swift Shark since that comment was posted. <laughs> I know. Oh, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, and funnily enough, the final game against Arizona this season is going to be on April 1st. So, we'll Oh, s- man, wouldn't we all look like fools uh, then if something happened? I'm just saying. But the storyline in this one, too, I mean, you know, <laughs> Sharks play well against a bad team. Who knew? <laughs> right? Uh, despite LeBanc opening the scoring, Kevin was benched for nearly 10 minutes of the second period. And after the game, LeBanc was quoted as saying, I felt like I was serving a life sentence. <laughs> Good God, man. I I thought the, the best dialogue on, on that whole situation was uh I, I think it was it was Ian who had said, like, oh, like I didn't know Bob was still coaching the team. <laughs> Dude, I'm just saying. It's just so sad, but uh, let, let's talk to Quinn, big coach Quinn, <laughs> about just, I, I don't know. Here's his take on sitting the bank. I'm still just tilted about this. Here you go. I, I really like the way you responded. You know, listen, just uh they just didn't like the second goal. I thought there was a, you know, there was more there from him that he could have, you know, been a little bit more responsible. And you know, uh, but I liked how he responded, and that's kind of what we anticipated. Uh, you know, he's a big piece of what we got going on here, and he's had a good year. And you know, I like, I like, I like the response. So okay, I like the response. I like what he did. <sighs> but then it comes out that he's going to be a scratch on Monday's game. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that. Let me let you know. But, dude, that I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, oh, I didn't, he, he made a mistake that I didn't like. Ha, have you watched Eric Carlson play defense? Dude, have you watched anyone on this team play? <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, mistakes are all up in this base. Yeah. Like, and, like, and that's it. Well, and that's kind of the, the thing that we've been saying all along, right? Is you look at these, these players sort of get isolated, right? As, you know they're not doing the right thing or whatever, but I, I'm just I just want to know when the you know when is when is the hammer going to come down on some other guys? You know what I mean? I mean exactly. When is, when is the last time just to just to throw one out there, right? When's the last time Evgeny Svechnikov has scored a goal? When's the last time Nick Benino has scored a goal? That's when's the I'm last? Time? I you know like I mean those are the two that come to mind only because Dude, is Steve actually, Lawrence still on this on this team? You know what? I don't. I still don't understand why you hate him. He's doing exactly what is needed to be done. I'm looking at, All right. like, like, like the reason why I say LeBanc and Sveshnikov. These are guys, you know, playing on the third line, playing on the power play. Like, okay, I'll tell you. You, you want to know why that second unit sucks? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll tell you why I hate on Lawrence. Sure. And th- this is me being the casual fan. Fair. Where Where did Lawrence start? Top line, right? And, and uh, where, where he, is he? Fourth line now. No, and he still isn't getting anything done. No, he started on the. He started in the. I be mean, the third or fourth line, and he. Oh, only you know what? To the you're, you're, for a hold game on. or two, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No. 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 You're right. No. I'm. I'm conflating him with uh, Cunning. Well, yeah. poor guy. Poor guy's uh, injured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's just. I don't know. I just. It's, it, just, it's, it's definitely. It's, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. No. It's. I'm so frustrated because I'm like. Really, I'm like, LeBanc, out of all the fucking people that you have to, like, take shots at or, like, sit because they made a mistake, LeBanc is the guy, is your go-to? Well, not only that, but as we've alluded to, with the exception of Timo Meyer and Alexander Barabanov, there's no other forward that's really been consistently impressive, right? You know, there's been pockets of good play here and there, but if you're talking over the course of the season consistently, it's just those two guys. So when everybody has been bad, why are we singling guys out? (sighs) 
I'm right like, there, there are, with you. There are there are obviously, you know, I, I I think you could convincingly say that this team has a lot of guys who are not playing well, and then guys who are just bad, and you know. I don't understand why we're going after the guys who maybe aren't playing well when there are guys who are much worse. Well, like, why are we sitting LeBanc, who has you know keeps getting flipped from a uh, top line, second line, top line, second line, and okay, he made one mistake here or whatever. Oh well, Jesus Christ, throw him down purgatory. F you. We're gonna put uh, you know AC Mont in your place and both. And it's like, dude, th- th- there are so many other players on this team that have made mistakes and I see nothing in the way of acknowledgement. Well, and I think, you know, and and we can get into it, but I actually I feel like thought, we are. <laughs> I actually thought Asamont played I thought he was one of the few guys against the Oilers who actually played with like with a heartbeat, you sure. know. Like, like, so I was, I obviously very, we talked about it last week, very skeptical of the waiver claim just because it's, you know, a guy, another guy when we already have a bunch of guys. Right. But, you know, he, he legitimately seemed to play with a pulse on, on, uh, on Friday night. And so while, while I don't think that he should be on the top line, at least when in that role, he played with some jump, Mm -hmm. um, and just to get back onto LeBanc for a second, because obviously he's a very sort of polarizing topic, right? But I don't the, know why. Well, you know, I don't either because, you know, that what the haters won't tell you <laughs> is that LeBanc is on pace for his second best statistical season in that's, the NHL. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, but the I, haters won't tell you that. Uh, but I just, I don't get why he is being singled out. He made a mistake. Let's make an example out of him and ignore the mistakes from other people. But that leads me to what I want to play for you now. Mm-hmm. Nico Sturm and Drew Remenda, their post game comments. You tell me if I'm reading too much into the tea leaves, you listen to it. Talk to me about how easily it was, or was it easy for you to assimilate into the sharks? Well, I mean, it's always easy when you get empowered by coaching staff and you get, uh, um, you know, the feeling that they trust you um, and you can play with self-confidence. I feel like a different player when I'm playing uh, with that confidence, when I know, you know, I, I'm able to make mistakes out there um, without, you know, getting sat or, or uh, you know, um, not being able to play the next game or stuff like that. I can, uh, I can try some things on top of, uh, you know, my core game, the defensive part of things. Um, and I'm not uh, being punished for it if it doesn't work. And that instills confidence in players if, if you're out there and you're and you're scared of making plays, then you'll never take the next step. And, and, and right now, you know, I feel like uh, I got that uh, I got that down pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go back to what Nico said about having uh, being allowed to, to do what he wants to do in order to try to make a play out there. That he's not held to a... a if you make a mistake, you're going to be on the bench. That he that he's got a coaching staff that believes in him, and that's I think a big testament to David Quinn and his staff. That's an outstanding answer. I love that answer. Yeah, no, I love that answer too. But, but <laughs> dude, but Sturm just said, I mean, dude, he literally sat there and said, "Hey, when I'm allowed to make mistakes and not be worried about being benched or whatever, you know, it, it allows you to be a better player." It's, and I don't know. I, it just felt funny to me to hear Sturm and Remenda say that post game after Banker was benched for ten minutes. And is it just me? Is that Sturm taking a swipe at the coaching staff, saying, "You know, hey, I'm allowed to make mistakes. I don't know why Banker isn't." It's hard to say, really, because I think <laughs> it felt I, like I, a swipe, dude. It felt it, like I a mean, swipe. It definitely feels it definitely feels like Sturm was maybe tap dancing around the idea a little bit, trying to say something without maybe upsetting the wrong person. And I, it's just hard because like when he says that, you know, the coaching staff obviously believes in him and lets him gives him a certain degree of leniency to make mistakes and correct things, and that kind of stuff. There's an element to which I agree with that 
because of the previous point we made where certain guys who have done nothing at all continue to play. Um, mm-hmm. I, it, it's just a very peculiar situation. I mean, if you, if, if Quinn wanted to bench LeBanc and say, you know what, I hate to do it, but because of A, B, C, and D, we have to do it. And I say, okay, David, I at least understand where you're coming from, but I, I, I don't get it. And, and that's not to say that Kevin LeBanc has been outstanding because I, as I've been saying all along, I think there's another level that he should be at at this point. Well, it's, he, it's, but he's I don't still think one he, of the better players on this team this year. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's in your top six for a reason. When, uh, dude, how was it? Last show, show before that, both of them talking about the shot that that kid has. Yeah, dude, we he, said shoot it more. Yeah, he dude, does. <laughs> fire it off. But the fact of the matter is, oh, he, you know, he needs to be more defensively responsible in that situation. Hello, Eric Carlson. I just I just go back to and and this is not an idea that I have this is one that I've sort of you know taken inspiration from somebody else right but you you, you hear that right oh you know this guy he's got to worry about his 200 foot game and yada 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 all that kind of stuff right I'm at which there's a degree a degree to which that is important don't get me wrong but if you have a player like we've talked about like Kevin LeBanc who there are certain elements to his offensive game that are really quite good. I think his skating is one, his shot is one, his passing, mm-hmm. you know, those those ones. With a player like LeBanc, who's got a very specific offensively-minded skill <laughs> he set. A, he has a very specific set of skills. Like, <laughs> I'm not worried about his 200-foot game. I'm worried about his 85-foot game. Yeah. You know? I, dude, I'm with you on that, but the thing, it's just kind of like, well, you know, when Couture makes a mistake, oh, can't sit him. Eight million dollar player, Hurdle. Fuck. LeBanc is at four and a quarter. <laughs> but Hurdle, <laughs> you know, eight million dollar player, can't sit him. You know, it's just kind of oh, Meyer. We want to keep him here over the, you know, so we can't sit him. It's just I don't know. It it, it just drives me crazy that LeBanc, for whatever reason, is the the whipping boy. For when there's it's like he's almost pointing at LeBanc to Couture and Hurdle and Meyer and go, This is what's going to happen to you if you do not play the way we expect you to. And 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 then who, you know, one of those players goes out and plays crappy, has a shitty shift, makes a mistake. Oh, I guess uh I'm gonna be benched now. No, 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 you make too much money. We can't bet you. <laughs> right, which it, 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 again, it's ridiculous because it, it's not to say that LeBanc has had some expert season, right? I, you know, again, there's another level for him to get to, but he's top five for forwards. Like you're benching the wrong guy. Like yeah, what? Dude, like that's what I'm at. You're benching the wrong guy. And, and and we've talked about it so many times. We've talked about it with Eric Carlson, and we've talked about it with Timo Meyer, with Tomas Hurdle. Like we've the the big guys, right? You. Yes, you know, you you would like as few mistakes as possible. I understand that. But between your whatever you want to say, between your commendations and your mistakes, if it's a net positive, you're you're doing okay. And I can't I like if if somebody wants to say to me, "Hey, LeBanc's been made more mistakes than he's made good plays." Okay, and that's fine. Show me where. Well, show I haven't me seen it. Dude, show me where, and the whole thing is, when you come into expectations on the league, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, do do me a favor. How, how many, um, <clears throat> excuse me, how, how many goals has Kevin LeBanc, or I should, not, not even goals, how many points, because, you know, clearly Chief has an issue, for, like, it seems like he wants to get off his shot, but he's so scared of making a mistake, which... Nico Steer, Sturm alluded to. It's like you can't have guys on your team that are like scared of you know making a mistake because then they're they're going to be playing at that point where it's just like no I'm not going to take the shot here you do it mm-hmm. right but the thing is <laughs> Christ Almighty dude. Kevin LeBanc right now, he has 25 points. He has 10 
goals. Like he, he's he's not, dude. I, like he is not the problem for me. Like uh, just to conversely put this, Oscar Lindblom has eleven points. Like I said, Kevin LeBanc has ten goals. Lindblom has eleven points. And I've seen a, more than a few times where Lindblom has not made the right choice. I've yet to see him benched. The the again, I'm going to bring out another one. The haters won't tell you that <laughs> that LeBanc is on pace for a career season in goals. Yeah, this his is what... career his career best is 17. He's on pace for 19 right now. And as we alluded to last week, you know the the have and have not style of the Sharks power play. LeBanc's, as you pointed out, he's got 10 goals this year. Eight of them are are at even strength. Imagine how many goals he would have if that second power play unit was a little better. Oh, dude, yeah, if he had a little bit more help. And the other thing that gets you is that if you look at statistically down the line, it's like, okay, yep. who who's who's your point getter? Of course, it's Carlson having mm-hmm. having a I mean a season that any defenseman would like give body parts to have. Yep, I mean killing it, and is a dash four. I mean, dude, a dash four with 56 points? Uh, yeah. Well, not only that, but a dash four on this team. I mean, look at Mario Ferraro. <laughs> like, look at look at Mario Ferraro. Look at Matt Benning. Look at uh, Mark Edward Vlasic, right? Yes, but, but, but here's my point. It's like Timo is second with 43 points, dash 10. Hurdle, 39 points, dash five. Okay, yeah, oh, one worse. Couture. 35 points, dash 18. Barabanov, I know we do not uh, enjoy the Barabanov slander in this room, but dude, Chief is dash 16. My point being is that you look at the top 10 goal score, or I'm sorry, point scores. There are only four guys, or three guys that have dash four. It's Sturm, Carlson, and LeBanc. LeBanc is not part of the problem so to sit him to me is just ridiculous well and and not for, only that, for, but... for you know a singular mistake right exactly it's it's kind of like it's sort of the we always talk about expectations right it's always like you know if you want to look at i i i think the the prime example is maybe it's Ev- Evgeny Svechnikov, right? Where you say, hey, you know what? Yeah, okay, guys only got four goals, but guess what? We only really wanted four goals out of him by this point in the season. And if that's true, then that's fine. But he shouldn't be stuck at four goals when he's playing as much as he is. You know what I mean? Well, like it's you just, sort of- dude, uh, t- like, t- <laughs> who, who, you, you have a top six, right? Mm-hmm. Is Kevin LeBanc in that top six? Is he top six of scoring points? Yes. Yes. What the? F- okay. So what's the problem? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, not only that, but he's uh, among uh, among regular forwards, right? Because obviously, you know, there are guys who have come in and played a game or two. Among regular forwards, he's the second best. Air quotes. Second best plus minus player among regular forwards. This is what I'm saying. It's I I don't get why LeBanc is being made an example of. And like I said, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much in the tea leaves, but I felt like Sturm was taking a little bit of a swipe at Quinn in that post game and saying, "Look, guys need to be able. They have to have." A little bit of a leash in order sure. to make them uh, make a mistake and learn from it. LeBanc, he's not a first year guy, right? This guy's been around for five, six years. Like, d- you know, we we all make mistakes. Why yeah. you are making a example out of LeBanc? <laughs> I don't understand it. What you know, one of your top six guys when you only have four top six guys. I mean. Really? Well, not only that, not only that, right? But you want to, yeah. We we know what the sharks are, but optically, public perception, you know, a- according to the according to the man behind the curtain, like 
you like the sharks want to do good things this year, right? So <laughs> I, I don't and know. They they, 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 want they want to be <laughs> they want to be at their best. Now no, no, you can get Bedard. No, from 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 intern like from the public perception point of view, like David Quinn is not going to come out and say we hope to lose every game, <laughs> but from the that's public what they brought me in angle, for, fuckers. <laughs> like like it, you can have a conversation on what you know at what level the sharks best is yeah. but at the end of the day the sharks want to be at their best you don't do that when one of your best four forwards is is getting a book thrown at them while some of your worst forwards is just like hey you know we're you'll do better happy to be here <laughs> yeah happy to be here you'll do better at some point and, and again, it, it's all like everybody talks. There's always conversations about expectations, right? Oh, this guy, based on his skill set, we should we think he should do this. There are <coughs> guys where let's just say, for example, right? Nick Benino, uh, Nick Benino, Oscar Lindblom, um, Evgeny Svechnikov, Matt Nieto. These guys, in terms of the type of player they are, like type of player versus their offensive output, they're doing exactly what they should be doing. But the problem is that they're playing at a higher position in the lineup, which means they need to do more, but they can only do what they're capable of doing. Does, do you get what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally get what you mean. And to that, I want to add in Tony Couture's uh, comment from the chat. that says, LeBanc's point total are inflated by Meyer and Hurdle playing alongside him, not his real self on the ice. He sucked when playing with Couture before shoulder injury. He's a lost cost, won't develop. See, I can't disagree more with that. I was going to say, because counterpoint, if a guy puts up numbers playing on the top line, why wouldn't you just play him on the top line? Yeah. Well, and the <laughs> fact right? that... Like, dude, hey, this, look, this guy is really good with Hurdle. <laughs> Maybe we should just play him with Hurdle then. Well, and, and part of that I want to put on Quinn. It was like for, for a stretch where it was like Meyer, Meyer Hurdle, and LeBanc was your top line. Or it was Meyer Hurdle and Barabanov, and then LeBanc was with Couture, and then who's this? It, the fact of the matter is LeBanc has been put in different roles over these 40-some-odd games. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He's coming in. He doesn't know who the hell he's going to play with half the time. You have to find some chemistry, so it's part of that I put on coaching and just go like, look, if Meyer Hurdle and LeBanc – Ha, if LeBanc, for whatever reason, had a crappy night that that game, but Hurdle and Meyer played well or whatever, well, maybe it's just that LeBanc had a crappy night. This happens to every professional athlete. Sometimes they just have a bad night. What about the times where LeBanc and Hurdle played well, but for whatever reason, Meyer played like crap? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't see Meyer's ass stapled to the bench for 10 minutes. Well, no, and, and again, like, I feel like you're never going to win... I feel like you're never going to win with certain people because you think about it, like look at what Le LeBanc is a good example. He's putting up good numbers again, not where he should be, but still one of the best on the team. He's putting up good numbers. He's playing in the top six. He's doing good things, but Hey, the sharks are bad and X, Y, Z. So it's LeBanc's fault. And you look at the, and again, you we've seen this before. Do you remember um, the season that was suspended because of the COVID nineteen twenty. Do you remember? What's COVID? How, right. <laughs> you, like you remember how many people were bitching about Timo Meyer? Oh yeah. What if I told you he was the leading scorer and team MVP that year? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> like, you know. So it's just I and and you've seen it on the flip side where guys are playing like absolute crap. But it's sort of like the, it's just sort of like this perfect, beautiful picture in the example that I'll give Matt Nieto. And I hate to dump on him because I'm sure he's a hell of a guy. But oh, dude, he's weed whacking you like a mother. <laughs> but with Matt Nieto, he's supposed to be this defensive dynamo, right? You know, really sort of penalty, you know, fast skater, penalty kill, chip the puck out, do all those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. So if he's such a defensive dynamo, why is the forward trio that he's a part of the worst plus minus <clears throat> well and the thing that gets me is maybe that we saw, somebody better should be on that line <laughs> well do and we saw it come out earlier today that it's looking as though the game tomorrow the the matinee mm -hmm. 
uh, for tomorrow versus New Jersey. It's looking like Gregor's going to get the tap and LeBanc is going to sit out. And I'm like, are you for real? I love that. I mean, I love I Gregor hate that. Play. I, I hate Gregor it. playing. I hate it. You hate Gregor playing? No, I hate Gregor playing in place of LeBanc. Yes. Okay. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I'm like, what, dude, like, well, I, dude, sit Benino for Gregor. Svechnikov? Yeah, dude. Lin Bl- well, I think Svechnikov was already going to be out, but it's sure. like Lindblom. You know what I mean? Dude, when was uh, Svechnikov hasn't played these this entire week, this past week. He's He, he sat out every game. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's good. But you know what? Who was in the entire week was Lindblom. What did what the hell did he do that was so fantastic? He 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 had a, he had a goal in a seven to one loss. Oh, good for him. You know what? I well, <laughs> you know. Mm, but it's a, what Gregor couldn't have had that same fluky goal. Okay. I mean, I don't. I you know, I don't. I don't. You know, I don't want to. I hope you don't think I'm trying to bust your narrative or anything. No, but, go ahead. But you know, two two points. Uh, two points in three games for Lindblom. He was an even player. Um, well, you know what the, the thing is for Gregor, I, I mean, maybe it's just me and I tell me if I'm wrong, the okay. last time that I've ever looked, if you don't play in a game, it's almost impossible to get a point. Last I heard that's that many people are saying, do you want to know something kind of interesting about Noah Gregor? Whip it out. So not the last game that he played, but the game before that he had a goal. <laughs> well, shocker. So it, it goes, it's like, it's kind of like, again, what you're talking about, you know, the, the, you could do something really good and it's like, um, who, okay, good job. Here's a game. Right. And then, you know, so a game against Minnesota, he scores a goal. Okay. Noah, good job. You're going to play against Vancouver. He's dashed three on Vancouver, which is not good. I understand that, but you have a good game. Okay. We'll give you another one. You have a bad game. We're not going to see you for a month. Right, <laughs> you know. All right, we we have to move on. I mean, I, we, this is a lot to talk about the first game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, it's because I think we we're gonna, you know, talk about the LeBanc thing later. But it just like you know, yeah, we got it out of the way. Yeah, sure. Fi- that is efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are running like a solar paneled house. Oh, dude. So the Sharks head over to the. L.A. side of things to play the Kings. Final game of the season. Last game against L.A. L.A. coming into this one 7-2-1 and one over their last 10. Reimer gets a start. You have to have been like, yeah, okay, that's not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh, dude. But it, the one thing, at least with this game. Say it. The, I mean, Arizona, they get a 4-2 win. They're 0-2 on the power play, but they did kill four penalties. Uh, LA a little bit different. They killed two penalties and they were one for two on the power play. So you're like, all right, special teams are working. It was the five on five, not getting it done versus LA, uh, by field. I'm sorry. Strolled by EK 65. <laughs> yeah, dude. It was, was just good. Dude, he almost could have like, just like put both of his hands behind it, like a speed skater and been like, yeah, I'm just going to go by here. <laughs> I mean, that was ridiculous. And again, EK65, it was a horrible play. Didn't see his ass get benched for 10 minutes, but it is what it is. Well, um, right, because you're not, because here's the thing, you're you're not supposed to bench your your good players, your best players, right? So I think it creates another question is of how do they view LeBanc? Not to get back on it, but you know what no, I mean? No, no, that, and, I, and I agree with you. And then the funny thing about this was during the broadcast was like, LA gets their first ever season sweep against the Sharks. And I'm going, is that really big? They, they played him three times this year. I was like, is that really a big deal? Like they used to play them like, you know, seven times a season or whatever. Well, see, I heard that and I was like, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just like, who, who cares? But anyway, well, uh, that's the thing because you, you know, the people, many, you know, those folks, <laughs> many people. They like, you know, if they if they don't have anything to talk about, then they don't have a show, right? So, oh, and, of course. And why, why do you think we're the, here? Right, but one of the things that I love about being, you know, self-produced and not, you know, State uh, media. being being paid by anybody is that if we think something is stupid or <laughs> insignificant, we don't have to talk about it. Conversely, if we think something is really, really, really worth talking about it. 
we can spend 25 minutes on it like yeah. we did with LeBank getting scratched. Right. And not, and not ignore it. Right. Yeah, nobody's telling us to go to commercial or anything. <laughs> or to not mention it whatsoever. Uh, exactly. But dude, Benino in this after the game says, we're there. Every game just can't get wins. It's frustrating for everyone. We're trying everything in practice and video competing, and it's just not going our way right now. And I heard that and I went, right now? <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's, it's the entire season. But stick taps to Reimer, dude. Following this game, he got owned, and he owned it in the in mm-hmm. the post game presser. And he was yeah. just like, "Yeah, I need to be better." I, I, it. <sighs> well, <laughs> dude, Reimer is such a media good guy. He should get that award every every season because he he stands up. He doesn't sit there. I mean, dude, let's be honest. There's more than a few times Reimer. Could have been like, well, yeah, if the defensive dickheads in front of me could like, you know, stop something from time to time, I might be able to help things out. Like he owns every single thing. Right. I just, the thing that I take away from it, obviously Reimer makes sense because, you know, he was the goalie in the game and, you know, you have to, you know, you have to wear that hat obviously of, you know, like you said, owning the loss, but. That, and we talked about this before, and un- unfortunately, the last time we talked about it, it also featured Benino, so I kind of feel like we're maybe beating a dead horse a little bit too much, but Pilot why, off. but like, why, like, okay, so, you know, the Sharks lose, and it's whatever, let's talk to the, you know, let's, uh, the assembled media is going to go talk to some people. Why Benino? <laughs> like, yeah, it did again, seem a little like, weird. Like the Like, again, <laughs> and again, that's not, again, it's not meant to be mean, because I'm sure he's a hell of a guy. But in terms of the <laughs> offense, we're talking about, you know, in terms of the offense, we're talking about the eighth best forward on this team. Like he can say all he wants about where the Sharks are well, at, he, what they're doing, the veteran, what they need veteran, to do. Veteran presence. I guess. But but here's but what does it say, dude? What does it say? Luke Cunnan has been oh. injured. Luke Cunnan's been injured for 13 games and he still has more points than Benino. <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> and again, Benino's uh. a hell of a guy, but let's face the facts. The offense is down. The defense is down. The faceoff win percentage is down. It's all down. <laughs> you know, I don't like, I'm sorry. Like if I'm win loss or whatever, if I want to talk to somebody at the end of the game, I want to talk to someone who I feel like is, like contributing. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, Quinn in the post game admitted it. So team is frustrated. Frustration. Oh, shit. Well, it's high. It's high. And, you know, disappointed in the first period for sure. I thought our first four or five minutes were good. And then we gave up that goal and you could just feel we got deflated and looked like we felt sorry for ourselves and really lost our way. And, you know, just really proud of the way we came back. We played two good periods, not enough against that team. You know, obviously the third goal is a killer after you tie it up. Uh, a couple turnovers in the, in, the, in the D zone. But, you know, it's a tough play because the guy throws it from the blue line and their guy's expanding, coming out to the top of the circles, and he tips it and it finds its way in. And then, you know, the fourth one's just blown coverage on a faceoff, which we've done nine million times successfully this year. And really, you know, in a lot of ways summarizes what's happened to us. We're something we've done well all year. We end up giving up a goal off of it. Last night it was we've done our control four check well all year and we give up a goal off of it. So, you know, but love the way we battled back. We make it four three and had chances to tie it. So, you know, a lot to be said for that, but obviously disappointed with the loss. Well, for five minutes we played honest hockey. For the next 15 we didn't. And don't let's not fool ourselves into thinking what happened here. You know, let's be honest with our evaluation here. We stopped playing with the desire and, you know, with the enthusiasm and with with the grit that we were playing early on and we just started watching people. The safest place in the building in the first period was in front of our net. And, you know, I thought that changed in the second and third period. We did a much better job, you know, getting into people, taking away time and space. (laughs) The safest place in the building was in front of our net. (laughs) You know, I love that. And (laughs) he's not wrong. No. And, And again, I think some people are, some people may make the comment as, you know, well, why would the Sharks want to play for Quinn when he's just making these comments all the time? And it's like, that's the play point. better. Yeah, play better. That's the thing. Yeah, play, you know, if you do, and this is this is beyond sports. If you, and this is, you know, I'm not a boss, obviously, but I have a boss like this. 
where it's like, if you do your job well, you're not going to hear from me. It's it's very much, there's a reason why the quote, I don't know if it's a quote or the saying, if you will, but it's like, no news is good news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like, if you don't hear anything from your boss, you're doing a good job. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no. Because good bosses will just leave you alone and let you do your thing. Yeah. Like, let you do the job that you're hired for. Yeah, no micromanage. It's just, hey, we hired you to do this. Am I getting on you because you're not doing it right? No, I'm not. Oh, well, what does that mean? That means you're doing it right. Right, and it kind of, rem- obviously, we we have more information, so this this mindset has maybe changed a little bit, but... Bef- before all of the nonsense came out, let- let's time travel a little bit. Remember when? Remember when Evander Kane was the Sharks? Who? Oh. M- was he was the Sharks MVP? Oh yeah. And and then it came out that some players were like, "Oh, if he's still here, I don't want to be here." Remember when that came out? Mm-hmm. And we had said, you know, who is saying this that it's actually going to mean something? <laughs> right and 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 obviously we know what happened with Evander Kane and so obviously that that methodology is a bit flawed in that situation but it it almost applies here where let's just say and I don't want to pick on somebody so I'm going to pick on someone who's not on the team anymore but let's just Fair. say like if Melker Carlson you know that kind of player fourth line penalty kill guy if Melker Carlson is like hey you know the coach is really you know he, he I don't like he's the message busting he's sending my balls man yeah okay well, thankfully, the, the thankfully the type of player you are is very replaceable. So we'll just go get someone. <laughs> hey, now, right? You know. Now that said, if 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 Timo Meyer is like, man, Quinn is kind of a dick. That's a bit of a problem. Sure. But if but if if, if somebody who's not going to be here next year is really salty about it, bye bye. Go go somewhere else. Yeah. Like, <laughs> again, it's like you said. If you do, you know, if you do a good job, you're not going to hear anything. Yeah. Well, and see, and that's the whole thing. Is interestingly. Enough in that cl- qu- clip, Quinn talks about you know oh he got better in the second and third periods. D- did they? <laughs> <laughs> you know if you're talking the about shots, did, well, I was gonna say if they talk about shots on goals, fine because you gave up 22 in the first and only eight in the second and seven in the third. But okay, you know silver lining is they got the Sharks got their first power play goal in 15 chances. So okay, happened in a loss, but sure whatever. Uh, finally, the Sharks would come back to SAP, face the Edmonton Oilers, who coming into the game, playing 500 hockey, not great, not great whatsoever. Kakinen goes back in net. It's the first game against the Oilers this season. And you had to think that, well, Sharks maybe got a shot here because like I said, Edmonton came into this game. I think they had two wins, two losses, two overtime losses. Like they, they were the embodiment of 500 hockey and it went off the rails real fucking fast. I mean, penalties and power plays, it's the sharks Oh, for four on the power play two for four on the PK, a, a team that had been, that's their bread and butter for the one thing that they're doing great this year that they did last year. Really great under Bob Bugner was They suck in all facets, but hey, that penalty kill is something to be talking about. But, boom, going into this, what happens? First game of this week against Arizona, LeBanc sat for 10 minutes. Whatever happens in L.A. happens in L.A., but coming into this one, LeBanc put down to the third line, and you get A.C. Monk pushed up. And I'm going, really? Really? Because Acemont is like uh, I don't know some wicked, awesome, you know, offensive power. I mean, to his credit, he actually played with a pulse in that game. But Who, LeBanc or Acemont? <laughs> Acemont, like, yeah. like I actually thought that he brought some jump to that line. But to your point, he's not known as the score. Right. So it's like okay, so like you can skate well, you can be in the right place, and you can do all the right things, but if you don't have sort of that scoring ability, like it's not really going to help you. Right. So, I mean, the storyline for that one, it, you know, great for the first five minutes and then not so great for the last 55 minutes. <laughs> Bad special teams. A Probably one of the worst games I've seen Benning play this entire season, despite getting an assist, his fifth 
in seven games, but still, you know, oof. Uh, the the best part about this, I will say, I mean, because the Sharks got outshot 41 to 26. I mean, it really is a case of the Sharks just defensively, top to bottom. Yeah. Forwards, defensive, they're just not a defensively sound team. No. They get caught out of position way too much. But the thing that really stuck with me is Randy Hahn in the second intermission. They have Drew on. You, you know, this is something we've seen over the course of the season is during the second intermission, if, if Hetty is Randy's partner throughout the game, they bring in Drew during the second intermission. If Drew is his partner throughout the game, they bring in Hetty during the second. They switch places during the intermission. You know, Hetty right. Hetty goes to see Ruzi. Drew comes and see Han or vice versa. The best part of this, which really, and we're going to get to this in a hot minute. Randy saying, you know, bringing on Drew. Drew, former coach, has some thoughts. Randy looks at Drew and goes, rather than talk about how bad the Sharks have been over the last two periods, let's just spend the next five minutes on telling you how great McDavid is. Dude, this game versus Edmonton, I've never seen an opposing team broadcast drool over a player on the other team like this. This well, was next level, dude. dude. From top to bottom, from like get-go, from the beginning of the pregame, it was like the Sharks are facing, you know, facing Connor McDon- or McDavid. Oh, my God. Best player to ever strap him on, ever. Fuck, fuck that Gretzky guy. You know what well, I mean? I, right. And and I think there was a couple of things that Just, really stood oof. out for me. Number number 1 being, oh, the Sharks don't, you know, the 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 powers that be don't want to talk about how bad the Sharks are. Big surprise. <laughs> but then you sort of, okay, shoe on the other foot, best player in the NHL, that's going to put asses in seats, right? Mhm. And and yet looking at the promotion for this game, I never heard McDavid's men- name mentioned once. Well, it, right. Like, if and, you want to sell tickets to this, why don't you mention, hey, the Sharks are hosting the best player in the NHL. Might want to come watch them. We'll see. And so this was the third thing that came to my mind with that whole situation is, uh, according to, you know, many people, the the Sharks are the best and only team worth talking about in the NHL. Why would you talk about someone else? <laughs> I mean, many people. So I, I don't know if I, between you, me, and the fence post, like I haven't watched anything on that channel that's not live hockey in probably four years. Yeah. For for the exact reason that you're bringing up. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, the post game, David Quinn just came in out and saying. We stunk, power play stunk, po- you know, special teams stunk, five on five. So everything sucked except for Kakinen. Can't put it on him. I'm going to tell when you. When's the last time you heard that? <laughs> well, but my whole thing was like, I'm like, really? <laughs> like, is it? Is that really the case? Because I thought there was a couple goals that Kakinen could have had. And it, when I heard that in the post game, I'm like, to me, that's, that's Quinn trying to put confidence into one of his two goaltenders that both of which are you know it. yeah putting up horrible numbers i honestly i'm like okay dave you know good job you're you're trying to pump kakinen's tires but we all saw so i don't know i don't i don't know that you can really hang that one on cap no Cap-Law. i'm not I hanging mean- it on kakinen but to sit there and say everything sucked but him Okay, sure. You know, it's like, no, I feel like that was a kind of a top to bot- bottom suckage. I mean, could you say that he sucked the least? There you go. I'll give you that. Okay. Could you, you know? say, okay, could you say that he barely sucked? <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, sure. You know, <laughs> but but just to say everything sucked but him, I'm going, nah, you could phrase that better. It's, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get to heroes and zeros, man. Uh, who's your hero for the week? I, I mean, good luck. <laughs> like, I don't even. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Whip it out. Like, who? 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 
who was good in this week of of hockey? I'm going to say, I'm going to do it. Say it, baby. Just say it. Say it. <laughs> I'm going to say Capo Kakinen. I mean, All right, so, so, uh, puts up now again, people are going to say, oh, yeah, he played well against shitty Arizona. Hey, at least he played well, right? You know, uh, put up a 931 in that game. I thought he looked very. Give him a hug. I do. I thought he, I thought he looked <laughs> dialed in, right? And then coming into the Edmonton game again, yeah, he was not the best, obviously, but he was the best of this team, and and you know, I really f- kind of feel like despite the onslaught, he he did his absolute best to hang in there. I mean, again, he made 34 saves. Yeah, you know, you want to like. Yes, he let in seven goals, which is brutal. Don't get me wrong, but he made thirty-four saves, and hey that's now. and that's solid. And on top of that, look at who played in the middle, James Reimer. What did he do? <laughs> Laid an egg. <laughs> yeah. So Kakinen had a good week, and the guy that he's battling with didn't do so great. I think we're gonna see. You know, let's let's. I'm gonna put on my predictor hat here. We've got three, you know, four games upcoming. If you include, you know, a week from tonight. I bet Kakin gets at least half of those. Oh, dude! <laughs> and we're gonna get we're gonna them. get into that, dude. Between <laughs> now and v- v- Valentine's Day, yikes! Um, for my hero, oh God! I mean, I, I get Timo's a sexy pick, right? Like, put up the it's most easy pick. Yeah, easy pick. So I'm not gonna go there. Magna, I think you could make a argument for like. I mean, they lost two or three, and I think he finished the week like plus one. And he's the only plus player on the team. See, so that's why I look at that and I go, "Well, maybe it's, it's probably." But you know what, dude? Uh, you're out there trying to give Kakinen hugs. I want to give Kevin LeBanc a hug. Like I feel like he got jam job <laughs> railroaded. Totally. Yeah. So Kevin LeBanc, you're my hero for this week. I mean, shit, dude. <laughs> LeBanc had a goal this week. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Can you say that for half the team? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, no, that's a solid pull. Yeah, banker. I, I, I feel. All right, so zero. I feel like, I, you know what's funny? I, I feel like with the hero, I feel like it's either the sexy pick, the sneaky pick, or the sympathy pick. Right? I feel like it's one of those three. Uh, and, and and I just pulled sympathy out of my ass. Yeah, and I and I, I think I said the sneaky pick. So you know. <laughs> All right then. Fuck. So sexy. I think for zero, we're not I'm bringing have... sexy back, is what we're saying. <laughs> no, sexy died a long time ago. Uh, Zero. Oh, I, again, like, is it, you know, can I say everybody? Like, right, like, right. No. Nope, you know, fine. I'm, I'm going to say the, <laughs> the Sharks lineup that was put in for the game against Edmonton. Oh, because, the, the lines? Yeah. Just the, the like bringing the entire, up AC Mon and like no, demoting no, no, LeBanc no, not, or what? No, not even that. The, the 18 skaters that played in Edmonton in the game against Edmonton. They're all going to get it because, again, you can be bad, as you've mentioned. You've been talking about this all year. You can be bad and play well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The Sharks, I mean, you don't have to you don't have to watch the game to know that they were, like, dead in this game. Hey, now. Right? Just look at the score. But when you watch the game, like, this is – like, it didn't look like an NHL team, Right. And obviously Edmonton is good, which you have to respect. But even if the Sharks had lost this game, I wish that they would have at least played like played like there was some kind of, you know, desperate something to look forward to. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't pick one person because everybody has to eat this one. All right. Uh, for me, I'm going to go a little bit harder on this. Um, I w- Initially... When I was putting this shit together, I was going to be Benning. Like, yeah. you know, first 15, 20 games were not great, but I go, hey, you know what? You got to give a guy a pass for assimilation. He's got to get used to what is happening around him. Mm-hmm. So I'll give you a little bit of a pass on that. And then he had that that kind of streak there for a while where you just like kind of, ah, dude, he, he, second in time on ice defensively aside from Carlson. And has made some solid moves from here and there. And then, boy, this week, dude, it just seemed like he was in front of whoever his tender was on every goal. Right. Or or he was the one who gave up the big one. Now, you know, granted, 
was part of a goal this week, you know, a solid goal, but you're just like, holy crap. So I would, I, I was looking at Benny and then the couture quote, quote came <laughs> <laughs> and it's, Oh, well, we're optimistic. You know, we think we can make a second half run because there's been a decent amount of games where, you know, we only, we only lost by one goal and blah, blah, blah. Well, okay. That's fine. That's Yes. What you have said is factually correct. You have only lost a number of games by one goal. But how many of those were you actually up by a goal or more? Right. You had the lead. You weren't able to hold on to leads. So I heard that optimism and I go, Couture, I like, I mean, maybe try to sell it to the room. You're not selling it to me as a fan because I've seen it. I watch these games. So, yeah, I, I got to say, you know, Benning, you were a solid second choice, but Couture, you're my zero for the week for trying to blow smoke up my ass because I'm, I'm not buying it. Well, and again, like you say, you know, you say optimistic. I think delusional. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So let's get on, you know, now that we're an hour in. <laughs> Last week, if you remember, it took us 20 minutes to get through the games. Now, for whatever, it took us an hour. Uh, hey, uh, Jerk, we, we've talked about it before. A, an announcement about an announcement? How, how, how would you like a report of a report about a report? Right. <laughs> so Beer League Hero, I don't know who that is, but evidently they have a Twitter account, reported that Oilers radio color guy, Bob Stoffer reported what the Sharks are interested or asking. <laughs> reportedly. Yeah, reportedly asking in a return to trade EK65. And then NBCS, they report. So again, a report of a report of a report. But according to Bob, the Sharks want three first-round picks for Eric Carlson, and they're willing to retain up to 18% of his contract. I don't know about you, Jerk. Um, I do the math from time to time. I'm not nearly as good as it, uh, good at it as you, uh, but that's like just like $2 million? Yeah, that's not much. For, for, for an $11.5 million contract? Seems a little low. Yeah, that's like an eyelash hair above $2 million bucks. <laughs> What I'm saying. No. So, uh, dude, good luck. Okay. Good luck getting three first round picks and an 18% retention. I mean, that means the signing team is still on the hook for nine and a half. Car Charlie McCoy, or McAvoy. I'm sorry, M McAvoy. I'm, excuse me. I'm so, I'm so fucking just tilted on this. McAvoy, right handed defenseman, is, is getting nine and a half, and he's only 25. Well, n not only that, dude, but here's the thing. Everybody's making conversations about the dollar amount, which they should. I mean, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> but again, it, it costs dude, money to field the team. But dude, four years after this year. No, really? Oh, yeah, you're right. No, no, you're right. This is the fourth year. Yeah. So sure. even so, let's just say for fun, right? Just Funsies. for, you know, for for S's and G's, right? <laughs> Shits and giggles. You know, let's just say, okay. The Sharks retain 50% of Eric Carlson's salary. Let's just say for fun. 50? Yes. Again, <sighs> this is this is for fun. This is for fun. Oy, oy, oy. The Sharks retain 50% of his salary. And then... What is what is that? Is that five and a quarter? Five and three quarters. Five and three. Oh, five, seven. Yeah, and actually, then okay, go ahead. there's a broker team that retains 50% of what's left over. That brings you down. That make that would make again hypothetically for fun. That would make Eric Carlson a two point eight seven five million dollar player. Now, <laughs> that is a number that even in a COVID era you can fit that under your salary cap. Nobody is disputing that. But as we've seen with Matt Benning, with Radim Shimik. Who? You can have you can have a low salary, but if there's a lot of years attached to it, it's still going to be problematic at times. No, I just I want to know, dude, the the sexiness of Eric Carlson this season. Right, I get it. 
dude is playing at a level that he some would say he's never played at ever. Oh, well, he's quite literally never played at that level. Right? So I look at that and I go, that's awesome. But again, it's, what what did the Sharks trade to get this guy? It was, you know, Chris Tierney, who ended up leaving as a free agent after four seasons. Balsers waved, who, ended, you know, the Sharks ended up taking and then ended up buying out for some silly ass reason. And if, he, he doesn't play the right way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he scores. <laughs> um, but, and if memory serves, I thought there was a tweet or something that was mentioned earlier that Balsers was out injury for a while and looks like he's coming back. Yeah, he, they, uh, he's on a conditioning stint with the Lightning's AHL team. There you go. So, uh, dude, and I appreciate that. So, you have that. Um, but tra- Chris Tierney, Rudolph Walsh, Dylan DeMello, who was eventually traded to Winnipeg for a third. You you got jo- the rights to Josh Norris, who Ugh. Norris, excuse Norris. me, <laughs> Josh Norris, uh, who you ended up signing to a fat fucking deal because he uh, do, Chief deserved it. You end up with a 2020 first rounder unprotected, ends up being Stutzla. Yep. 2019. My point being is that you gave up a king's ransom for the guy. As you would expect at the time. Sure, sure. But my point being is like, even if you're going to eat 20% of the 18%, it's nine and a half. What team has nine and a half just burning a hole in their pocket? And the the Sharks are going to have to take back some bad contracts, right? In order for the other team to fit that into their cap. Yeah. Cause obviously here's the thing. I mean, now there's so much to be said about this. First of all, like I don't obviously Bob Stoffer, like Bob Stoffer is a person in the <laughs> sort of media news reporting kind of circles. Like, so like Bob Stoffer, he's like, it's not just some random guy out there, but again, the, to say that the sharks are, you know, they want three first round picks and they only want to retain 18%. The, the ludicrous, you know, idea surrounding that leads me to believe that somebody is not talking to somebody and that there's more to that report. Right. But let's just say for, for argument's sake, say the sharks only want to retain 18% of the salary to your point, they're going to have to take on, a contract from somebody else. I mean, if they don't want to retain more salary, they're going to have to take a bad contract back in order to make it work. And <laughs> if, 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 if not more than one. Right. And now again, if the sharks plan on being bad for the next two, three, four years, what does it matter? Right? <laughs> sure. So, but I don't know, but here's the other thing, like, and, and if, if you could, could you please put that screenshot back up? I just want to look at of the, what? of the, the report, the, the tweet. Yeah. So it says, it says, according to Bob Stoffer, the sharks, want yeah yeah well dude i don't know if you've i don't know if you've ever negotiated for something you always start off at like the top most and then you work your way down you know right but not you know to be you know if you want to be a if you want to be a stickler here about this right like you wanting something and asking for something two very different things (laughs) the sharks no I, i would say wanting something and getting it Two different, but things. even but even then. So let's just say let let's say that this is true. The Sharks want three first round picks plus eighteen percent salary retention. Let's just say the Sharks want that. That doesn't mean they've asked for that. True. You know what I mean? Because again, to your point, you sort of swing high. You swing above what you are comfortable doing, and then you sort of get worked down to an, a more more appropriate level, right? I don't know. I just, I go back to the idea of Mike Greer wants three first round picks to trade for a guy that is having a fantastic season over the last five, who has injury problems over the last five. Like he's had one good season over the last five. You're going to ask for all of this yet when he was four years younger, he didn't pull the, like he, I mean, he pulled a good pull, but you know, let's say what it is, you know, 
Tierney, uh, you know, the, again, you have to look at where He's the Sharks coming off a good. He was coming off a good year at that a, time. A decent year. Uh, Balsers, I mean, let's be honest, probably like a, a toss in. DeMello, you know, uh, okay, decent 5 6 what's, guy. What's funny about that is I almost feel like obviously you look at what obvi- obviously Josh Norris is the sexy part of that package, right? Oh, like, well, Aut- that and the unprotected pick. Right. You know, Ottawa is really counting their blessings every day that they still have Josh Norris, who, by the way, is is looks like he's ready to return from his injury, which is awesome yes. for him. But but let's, you know, to really dig into it even further. And again, this has nothing to do with the Sharks, but the, all year the, the conversation has been, oh, man, you know, Ottawa would really love a right handed defenseman. Well, <laughs> who just so happens to be and, and again, Ottawa traded away Dylan DeMello again because he's a, a re- pending unrestricted free agent. They weren't going to resign him, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. They traded away him to Winnipeg. He re-signed in Winnipeg. He is their best right-handed defenseman. You think Ottawa would love to do a do-over on that one? Dude, of course. <laughs> well, dude, do you think the Sharks would love a do-over on this whole thing? I, you know, I don't really know. I just said, uh, dude, I think they should. I think, you know, like I feel like this is a do over. You look at what they gave up. Chris, you, Chris Tierney. Chris Tierney's in the AHL. I don't really care about yeah, that. No, no, no. But I mean, but I, I'm saying like a guy at the time, that's that's a depth guy. Balsers, depth guy. DeMello, you know, depth. Really good defenseman. Yeah. Like pretty, like a 3-4 pairing, maybe a 4-5. Okay. And then Josh Norris. Okay, maybe he didn't turn out to, you know, he didn't blossom as fast as you hoped he did, but, well, he did in Ottawa. Maybe you just needed to give him a little bit more seasoning. Now, I don't want to get into the first-round pick because pick's a lottery. We don't know that the Sharks would have fallen to where they did had they not made all of these moves. So you can't count Stutzla as somebody who would have come over for the Sharks. No, I, I, I bet you, if you wipe this trade clean, like if you do a do-over on this trade, I bet you the Sharks' first-round pick isn't third overall. I bet you. Oh, t- t- I'm, I'm right there with you. And and maybe it's also a case of they end up uh, giving Pavelski that third year. Like, we or, don't know. Or, conversely, maybe they let him go still, but have the backfill to mitigate that loss. D- th- thank you. So... Anyway, the, my point being is like for to sit there and sit there, oh, Greer, my buddy, my brother. We want more than what the, we pay. The, <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. Three first rounders for a 32 year old defenseman who has an injury issue and has one good season out of the last five. Good luck. If now, he, now, again, it, I go back to the idea of. You always ask for more than what you're willing to take. Right. But Jesus Christ, dude, when you see that as the report, I guarantee you there are 31 other GMs going good effing luck. I agree. And I think now if you, let's just say, and and for, for those who have maybe forgotten, Eric Carlson still leads all NHL defensemen in scoring this year. Whatever you may think, he's going to get some Norris Trophy for votes this year. I'm not D- saying no, he's going to. No, gonna... no, no, no. He, 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 he's not going to get Norris Trophy votes. He's going to win the Norris. You think Norris. he's going to win it? He, it's, it's, if he doesn't, dude, too many heroes in the voting sure. pool. But okay, but so for argument's sake, whether he wins, whether he's a finalist, whether he gets a big chunk of votes, whatever happens, right? You want to if you're if you're Eric Carlson and you want to be traded, do what you did this year, do it next year and the year after. If you're if you're Mike Greer, and again this this reported ask is is that it's reported, it's not confirmed. If yeah, Mike, and for all we Mike, know, somebody who was talking to somebody, blew, well, this is what I think they should give it, you know, and then that blows up into a whole silly conversation. Well, and, and and again, you know, when it's like you said, when it's third hand information, for all we know, the source could have been. <clears throat> You know, the source could have been like kind of being a, a a jackass about it and being like, well, why don't we just ask for three firsts? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and play money ball hockey style. <laughs> right. But so what I'm saying is if you're Eric Carlson and you want to be traded, do this again. If you're Mike Greer and you want 
a return package resembling what the reported report is, cross your fingers that he does that again. Because if, say, Eric Carlson, even if Eric Carlson is a finalist for the Norris Trophy and doesn't win, and then next year he's doing maybe not the same numbers but similar numbers, then I think this reported report at least becomes a little more believable. Well, see, and my whole thing is that when the Sharks gave up that ransom for him, yeah, Carlson was an All Star for three of the five previous seasons, and he was, and it wasn't that long ago that he had won his Norris trophies. Yeah, yeah, while winning a Norris and finishing second in the Norris voting for the two other times, you know. And so here, here's my thing that I want to say for for all the people that listen to our uh, that, that are that are chill enough and cool enough to listen to our podcast, but that yet rail on me. Be, you're just a Carlson hater. Okay. Let me let me let me let me let me spit some some stuff. Okay. Eric Carlson. Generally poor defender in large mm-hmm. part because he is so heavily involved in the offense. He takes high risk approaches to the back end. He is a classic rover, almost a fourth forward on the ice. When defending the rush. Carlson has strong hand-eye coordination, routinely picks pucks, and passes out of the air. The trouble is he doesn't defend the rush. A lot of time he skates to get back. In the defensive zone, his play can best be described as permissive. He's passive in his willingness to attack and cut off offense, and he does not block shots which means the opposition can generate dangerous looks around him. Now, I just said that. Does that make me a hater? No, because I don't know anything you said that was w- Was inaccurate, wrong. right? Right. But the thing is, I didn't say that. Frank Valley, respected NHL reporter, said that. But So that that's my point, is... Frank Valley had a great take on Daily Faceoff earlier this week where it's like got into his archetype and ideal role, scouting reports, potential fits, comparable trade returns, a summary, the whole thing. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, dude, this is, this is stuff that I was saying about Eric Carlson two years ago, but I, I'm a hater. I'm a dick. You know what I mean? Right. But somebody else says it and it's like, oh, well, that's astute. That That's incredibly astute recognition. And I'm gone. Oh, okay. So sounds like Frank was a hater, but I guess he wasn't. But anyway, I, the, the point being, I just, <laughs> I don't understand how this is going to happen. We haven't even mentioned the EK is a fucking full no move. For his entire deal. It's not like it like switches after a few years, like Hurdle or Vlasic or any of that. Full no move. He's going to dictate to where he wants to go, and that's obviously going to be with a competing team, which obviously kind of like puts, I don't know, like the bottom third of the league out of <laughs> contention. So, you know, I don't even want to get into this. <laughs> you know, so Greer, when asked about it, said, oh, well, some of the reports are inaccurate. It's got to be something that makes sense for us as an organization. I'm not out there dying to get rid of, you know, a defenseman who's on pace for 100 points. Yeah, that's great to have a defenseman who's on pace for 100 points. Last time I looked, you're still 28th out of 32 in the league. Who fucking cares? that you've got this one great player. If he's that great, move him for help in the future because current, it, 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 it's it's not working for you. Get Bedard. Get Fentilli. Right. Get, you know, get up in there. So anyway, Mike Greer spoke with the media on Friday, addressed the Merkley topic. Greer saying he wasn't surprised by the request given the conversations that him and Joe Will (laughs) have had with Mercury and his agent, which is very odd because when John McCarthy was asked about it, Barracuda coach, he was like, 
yeah, I'm, I'm surprised by this. <laughs> so, which makes you wonder, is the left hand talking to the right hand? I don't know. But Greer said, I don't think Merkley was thrilled that he didn't go to Europe to begin with. There are things we value as an organization that we've asked Merkley to do more consistently, and the consistency hasn't been there from the standpoint. He's got NHL talent. He can run a power play. He's got great vision. But you've got to be willing to engage physically in your own end, care about boxing out, and things like that. I think he's just been very inconsistent with that, which, of course, to me, I'm like, wait a minute, this is supposed to be the next EK, right? When the hell has EK cared about engaging physically or boxing out, guys? He hasn't. Well, you have only room. You only have room for one of those guys. Yeah, so, right? <laughs> but the the funny thing is, Greer noted, if Merkley shows improvement in those things that they've asked him to do, to work on, there will be opportunities. How? Like since all of this came down, there's been four games that the Barracuda have played. Merkley has been scratched for every one of them. How right. do you, how how do you show improvement if you don't get a, a chance to play? That's that's not just me, right? No, I, I <laughs> again because like you like we've talked about all along. You know when you when you make a mistake, when you do things that cost your team the game, all that's on your mind is the next opportunity to redeem it. You know. Yeah. Speaking of redeem, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, sounded like such a great transition to Shimmick. Who? Where's that guy been? Noah Gregor. Been reported he is frustrated with being repeatedly scratched. Guy has played less than half the season, saying it's tough when you've missed this many games in a row. Talk to the coaches as much as you want. I'd probably like a little more communication. It's frustrating. I feel like I should be playing more than I have this year. I also believe that I could have played better in some games that I played in, but it's frustrating when you play in less than half of the games. Dude, how, how, I mean, it's, it seems like since the beginning of the season, we have been on the Gregor bus and we right. feel like he's, you know, not, not every time, but dude, it, jam job, right? Yeah. A little bit just because, as we've brought up all along, like it's not likely that he is going to be the best player or even better than anybody who's currently playing. But I find it hard to believe that he's a worse option. Dude, I, I, how, how pro Svechnikov was I for, for a hot minute? Far too long. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and now I'm just like, how the fuck is Gregor not getting a look? And now you're going to tell me that tomorrow versus the devils, Gregor's going to go in for LeBanc? Are you kidding? Yeah, it's a bit peculiar. <laughs> what are your other options again? You could pull Lindblom out of that. You could pull Benino out of there. But, and you're going to go. <sighs> Dude, drives me crazy. Gregor, th th that's a guy that I feel, is this like Balser's 2.0? <laughs> like he's that guy that you hope that the show, well obviously this is Gregor's uh he did you know he's uh what FA he'll be an RFA yeah yeah it's and and let's, I mean dude the way the sharks have treated him are they going to retain those rights they're going to be like no have at it I wouldn't be surprised if he's traded at the deadline I, but it's going to be hard to, I mean, you hope that you find a team. No, it won't be hard. He's making so little money. Anybody no, I mean, I'm making so little money, but there's so little tape on him because he's not getting any, you know, game time. Sure. Oh, yeah, so it's, you know, and so that's my, my whole thing. It's like, sometimes it, it makes me wonder if the sharks are going to, uh, like, it almost makes me wonder about tomorrow. It's like, Hey, you know what? We need to start making money moves. Uh, maybe we sit a guy specifically to showcase Gregor and what he can do, you know, and try to inflate that. I remember way, way, way back in the day when 
Uh, the Jeff Friesen had not played for a, a little while, and Steve Shields had not played for a little while because he was injured. And then all of a sudden, Steve Shields played like three games in a row. And a buddy of mine asked me, he was like, wait a minute, I thought Navi was the next guy. Why are they playing Shields? And I go, because they are showcasing him. They're literally saying, look at this guy, uh, because we're going to fucking dump his ass. So here you go. This is what he can do. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Gregor, th this is a guy that I root for. I hope, he, whether he gets waived or traded or whatever, I hope he comes back to SAP in like two years and has, you know, like a four-point game and like skates off the ice with both of his middle fingers in the air. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I feel like he's got jammed so hard. And the funny thing is, and this is something that Jerk, talk, uh, Jerk and I talked about off air, is the fact that when they put up the uh, Curtis Bashelka, best goddamn Sharks reporter in the Bay Area, bar none. Yes? I love everybody. I love Pashelka. I'm, I'm a little biased because I'm a little biased because Pashelka told me I made a good point that one time. See, and that's what I'm saying. That's what, that's why I'm with you. That's why right. you know. If, if somebody else tells us that we made a good point, then then you're the best. <laughs> <laughs> but Pashelka, dude, he throws up the article about Gregor and throws in a photo featuring Gregor sandwiched between. Balsers and uh, who's the other guy? Bordalo. Yeah, Bordalo. Like you sandwich him between a guy who is not uh, that you refuse to call up. The other guy is a guy that you bought out because he doesn't play your stuff. Fuck out of here. <sighs> All right. I feel like we've gone on and on about Gregor, but it just it, it pisses me off that great. Like it pisses me off that Gregor hasn't gotten more of a look. And it pisses me off that LeBanc is the guy who's getting the screw job to find a spot for Greg. But whatever. Hey, this is something that hasn't been officially announced. So uh, I think I, I just want to like throw this out there to everybody watching. Are you interested in that Patrick Marlowe? The Patrick Marlowe retirement game? What is it? Saturday, February 25th, the Sharks are pay playing Chicago Blackhawks. And that is the official Patrick Marlowe retirement night. But what was announced by our buddy, Nick Nolenberger, voice of the San Jose Barracuda, yesterday announcing, and I haven't seen this announced on any other platform or network, so maybe Nick jumped the gun, but hey, we're going to jump it with him. 2023 Legends game is going to happen the night before. February 24th, Friday night, Tech CU Arena. Again, this is the night before the Marlowe retirement, but hello, Legends game. And who are these legends going to be? So far, what we've heard is Owen Nolan, Mike Ricci, Ryan Klo, Danny Heatley, Evgeny Nabokov, Joel Ward. That's just the names that Nolan Berger tipped off. But there's going to be the locals. Who is local, you ask? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go Curtis Brown on this. There's other players. Why? Because they're here. Uh, there's going to be Devin Setaguchi, Scott Hannon, Mark Smith, Dan Boyle. Curtis Brown, there, there's going to be a lot of players involved in this. So from what I understand, the tickets are going to go on sale January 20th. So the Legends game, if you are a OG fan that loves those players, they're going to be there. Notice I, uh, Steve Shields wasn't in there. That's weird. Anyway, uh, through 44 games this season, the Sharks have 34 points. Last season, they had 47 points. Uh, would would this year's team be any worse with Bugner? Honestly? Like you, um, you, you want to talk about, it. oh, we have to trade the, you know, we have to change the culture and blah, blah, blah. F you. The culture was changed last year, to be honest. They played hard 
for each other. They didn't wave the white flag last season. It was, they got Kane out of the room, which it seemed like a lot of the players wanted. I'm sorry. I felt like the Sharks played really hard for each other, didn't wave the white flag. And this season, it's like, I felt like they, they played hard. There's a couple of games like I think you might have waved the flag a little bit. But, I mean, dude, the, the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, it's a 13 points better at this point last season with Bugner. You, you're going to tell me Bugner was the problem? Well, the team was also better. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, 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 I swear to God, you said some shit at the beginning of the season that on paper the Sharks were better this season. The top six is better. The bottom six. It's, it's largely the same, isn't it? Yes, but the the top six is playing better. That's what I'm saying. The, oh. bottom six, the bottom six is worse. The blue line is worse. You know, goaltending is worse. But see, but that's the funny thing. How is the blue line worse when the blue line is putting up a point per game better than last season? Because Eric Carlson has single-handedly moved that needle by himself. Okay, but again, the numbers are what they are. The The blue line is contributing a point per game better than last season. Okay, but how would this team be if last year's Eric Carlson was here, right? <laughs> Might have made the playoffs. <laughs> well, let's not get crazy <laughs> let's get not get nuts so anyway it's i don't know it is what it is coming up this this week it's what new jersey a matinee game tomorrow dallas on wednesday at columbus oh jesus christ the sharks are starting a ridiculous road trip but at columbus and then at Boston, which is going to lead next Sunday at Boston, our final. And you can, if you listen, if you listen closely enough, you can hear the absolute just <sighs> from Hockey Jerk knowing that next week is the final after Dark Takeover. <laughs> but what did I say? New Jersey, Dallas, Columbus, Boston. So what I'm saying is. The Sharks are about to go one and three this week. And uh, we're just all going to have to deal with it. Uh, going around the NHL. And th there's really only one thing I have to say. Martin Jones. Jonas. Yes. Chief shut out the Boston Bruins. The noted former Boston Bruin handed Boston their first home defeat this season. Weren't you talking about Linus a week ago? <laughs> <laughs> He's still good. Uh, still good. But, dude, over his last seven starts, Martin Jones, 8-15 the other night versus Chicago when they won 8-5. to <laughs> Yikes. And I think if memory serves, like scored like six goals on seven shots. <laughs> it was ridiculous. But 8-15. But the previous games before then, 947, 938, 963, 826 sucks. But before that, two back to back shutouts. For real? The Sharks are paying Martin Jones right now more money than they're paying Reimer. And his numbers are better than Reimer and Kakinen by a mile. So my question yeah, to you is well, no, hold on. My question to you is this Is Seattle going to go from outhouse to penthouse? Because with games in hand, the Kraken right now are on an eight-game heater, and they're only two points out of first. Yeah they they looked like they look like a team that's poised to make a big move at the uh, deadline. But dude. I would also I wouldn't also I wouldn't get hyped about what Martin Jones is doing because as I mentioned last week. Oh, dude! Every every you know. I mean, yes, tender 20, can get on a heater. I mean, 21-5-3, which is an awesome record, but his save percentage is still well below average. Like, that is but going is it, to... But is it better than <laughs> Reimer and Kakinen? I mean... <laughs> if you want to be technical, yeah. But <laughs> if you want to be a douchebag about him and, it. Him and Reimer have the same save percentage, actually. But, 
the point is, is like, yes, like Jones has a good record, but it's not him doing it. And that's proven. It's by not him doing percentage. it, but you have to admit from the beginning of the season to now, he he's, he's gotten better as the season has gone on. Yeah. I mean, he's gone from shit to okay. Sure. Yeah. Well, t- f- I would love for Kakanu to do that. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, let's let's get into some other stuff and get out. Ooh, Barracuda. Man, what a weird week for the Barracuda. Let me see. It started off what? <laughs> Could have played four this week. The beginning of the season, or the be- season, beginning of the week, they traded Ozzy Weisblatt. <laughs> but that's all well, minor league his bullshit. Jun- his me- junior team, his junior team traded him. Yeah, which means his fuck rights. All. Yeah, which which means yeah, rights. Which means fuck all unless he gets sent down. And right. clearly, the Barracuda have no interest in sending him down. So I don't even know what that's about. Uh, but yeah, he's not getting sent down again. Merkley still here, but still getting scratched. But the Cuda dropped four straight following a couple wins that followed an eight game losing streak. However, uh, you're, you're going to have to bring up the numbers for tonight. I think they won, <laughs> but yeah, the Portland winter Hawks acquired the rights to Ozzy Weisblatt from the Albert Raiders. It is what it is. Uh, should the Sharks send him back to junior, it will be Portland instead of Prince Albert. There you go. Uh, I think obviously the thing is Portland is second in the West while Prince Albert is currently 11th in the Eastern. So it is what it is. They started off versus Coachella three, two shootout loss. Merkley misses his fourth straight game, which makes everybody go what? But Coachella has been a bit of a poison to the Barracuda this season. So I think there were, Happy to just get a point out of that. Then they head over to San Diego. William Eklund got into his first fight. It was a loss, and Eklund, to be unfair, kind of got a little bit of an ass kicking. If you've ever seen the movie Major League, where, uh, oh my God, what what's the player? What what's the? Uh, oh God, what's 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 his? Oh God, what's the guy's name? The bl- Willie Mays Hayes. Willie Mays Hayes makes a basket catch. And when he comes back to the dugout, the coach goes, great play. Don't ever fucking do it again. Like, I felt like that was the thing with William Eklund. Like, good fight. Don't ever fucking do it again. This is not <laughs> why we have you here. <laughs> then yesterday, Abbotsford, it was a shellacking. Uh, if, if I remember, like, what? Ended like 6-1 or something. It wasn't good. But the scary moment was Adam Raska clipping Jack Rathbone behind the net. Uh, Rathbone got stretched off. They ended up uh, posting, I believe, this morning or late last night, whatever it was, that Rathbone was taken to a local hospital, assessed, ended up being released. They're still going to keep an eye on him. But, man, that was uh, – I'll tell you, look, Teal Town USA Twitter – We've got the video with audio as well. If you want to check it out, it didn't look, uh, you know, like you look at it and you go, really? Like, like chief had to be stretched off. It didn't look bad, but for whatever reason it happened. And, uh, but thankfully Rathbone looks all right. Uh, Finally ended up earlier today, there was a matinee between Abbotsford and the Barracuda. Like I was saying, Eklund earlier, he had the fight well today. He had two goals. Bordalo has a pair of assists. You have to love that. But it's a uh, 3-2 victory for the Barracuda over Abbotsford. And it's something that, honestly, the Barracuda needed because it has not been a good stretch over the last 20 games for them. The Cuda are just going to play once this coming week, next Friday, against the San Diego Goals. So hopefully that works out for them. Your leaders are still the same. It's it's basically the Bordalo and Agazino show. So it is what it is. Oh, man. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. I got two for you. First one is, did everybody pay attention to Elias Peterson earlier today? Look at this. 
He's just... Whatever. Get me the fuck out of here. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, if that's not like the antithesis, or not the antithesis, but the embodiment of like, I don't even want to be here anymore. <laughs> like, have you ever seen the movie Clerks where he's like, I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> like That's what that video, the three seconds of video, that's what that looked like. Well, that's, I mean, you know, the you talk about teams that are con constructed really poorly. I mean, that's the Canucks for you, you know? I mean, it's <laughs> like they have a lot of good pieces, but for whatever reason, it's just not working out the way that everybody had intended. And now, you know, they're going to they're gonna lose their captain and best player this year. Jeez. Man, the way things oh. have shifted around. But, yeah, let's get to that tweet of the week. Oh, oh we love a good tweet of the week. And I really love this one. So our buddy, Adrian Dater, used to uh, write for whatever the Colorado media was there. I forget what it was called. The Denver something or other. Ended up going to uh, doing the, the, what is it? The Hockey Now dance. So it was the Avalanche Hockey Now or Colorado Hockey Now or whatever it was. But somebody pointed out Vancouver media, such as it exists now, consists of a paper that is barely hanging on the rights holders, assorted bloggers, podcasts, and websites. The notion that this is a huge hypercritical media market is absurd. And I suppose a convenient excuse and data piled on saying this guy was and is a fearless reporter on the Canuck scene for a long time. Unfortunately, people like him have been replaced by sycophants who only get access to their teams if they tow the company line. I got to say, I appreciate that from data. We have come to a point, in my opinion, way too much state media. You know, I'm old enough to remember David Pollock, Ross McKeon, Ann Killian. Not, not a fan of her work per se, but she didn't sugarcoat stuff. She didn't toe the line to get access. So that part I appreciate. I'll even say Kevin Kurz. How many times did he piss off Evander Kane or the coaching staff with some of his questions? And now you look at some of the video, and I'm not saying the Sharks. I'm saying, I mean, this is local teams, no matter what sport they play. This is hockey teams, all 32 of them. It does seem to be the whole thing of, oh, don't ask a question that might upset the person you're asking it to, or we're going to take away your access. That is the very definition of state media and jerk in my mind needs to stop. Yeah. I mean, again, like it's people don't listen to whatever it is, whether you're a podcast person, radio show person, whether you like to read the newspaper, read articles, whatever your preferred medium is, mm -hmm. like, I don't think you're listening to this podcast to feel better about the sharks and have, you know, 20 different hypotheticals jammed down your throat that create a 1% chance of the sharks making the playoffs. No, you're here because you want to know, you want to know what somebody who watches every game and, and, has eyes on a lot of stuff. You want to know the opinion of that person. You're like an honest opinion. Yeah. Like do you, if I come on and, and again, it's insulting to the fans because you know, if say you, again, we've been talking about, um, you know, pretty much all year we've been talking about how good Timo Meyer is. Right. Imagine we came on the podcast and we were like, you know what? I I'm just not really seeing it from Timo Meyer. You know, I don't think he's doing anything to help this team. Every single person listening to this podcast is going to be like, okay, I'm insulted because I literally have watched Timo Meyer and he's played very, very, very well. He's probably, if aside from Eric Carlson, he's probably a team MVP candidate. <coughs> and so it's the same kind of thing the other way where the Sharks have been dog shit for the last four years, but then you turn on, you know, <laughs> you turn you, you turn on channel seven, whatever it is, 723, if you've got Comcast and you, you hear a, an assorted panel of individuals talk about how you know the sharks are close to being close and you know <laughs> there's there's 20 different um you know micro positives that somehow come get combined into a single you know 
half positive, you know, and it's just it's insulting because I think it 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 assumes well it's patronizing because you're assuming that the listening audience is coming to you to be informed, which is not the case. The listening audience comes to you because they want to know your take on the situation. Yeah. It's... Like if I, if I want to be informed on something, hmm, how good is Timo Meyer doing this year? I'm going to go on to, you know, pick your site, Hockey DB, Elite Prospects, Hockey Reference, NHL.com. I'm going to type in Timo Meyer. I'm going to say, wow, Timo Meyer is almost on pace for a point of game season. That must be really good. Yeah. You know, I'm but not going to, I'm not going to fire up a television channel to get that information. But unfortunately, it seems that, that you know, pre and post, and and, I, and this is not you know a slam on uh, Brody or Curtis by any stretch, or any of the other people that take their slots, whether it's you know Laura Britt or uh, Scott Hannon or Mark Smith. It's uh, they're 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 doing the job that they're paid to do, which is to be fair, build the brand, toe the line, and they do a, a spectacular job at that. It's just annoying because they don't work for the Sharks. They work for a Sharks partner. Yes. Which goes back to what Dater was saying. It's just kind of like, if you don't toe the line, are you going to get that access? You might not. Sleepy Mofo in the chat saying, Dater has always sucked. I would disagree. Like, do I agree with everything he says? No. But on this, I think he nailed it. I think he hit it out of the park. He said... Something that I think a lot of people will not say publicly. Right. Because like you said, they're, they're afraid of losing their meal ticket. They, yeah. They don't want to lose and the, the access. And the thing is, I like, I understand like the, these people, you know, people, what podcasters or newspaper writers or TV show hosts, whatever, like you said, they're playing the game. And I understand that. I understand that they're playing the game. I just hate that the game exists. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the whole thing is like, don't hate the game, hit the player. No, I hate the game that it exists. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm I, right there with you. The, the fact that a team, and again, this is not me talking about the Sharks specifically. I'm saying this, I've seen this happen, different sports, different leagues, whatever, that whoever it is will give an honest take. And because that take is negative, because that team for whatever reason, that particular season is not doing well. Oh, I can't believe you didn't paint us in a positive light. We're taking away your access or whatever. No, it's, it, it's so silly because it's, it's how dare you tell everybody that the sky is blue, that we can all see, you know, like, give me a break. We, you have to, it just goes back to the, the very best Drew Remenda quote ever. How can I be taken seriously as a broadcaster if I'm not allowed to con critique the team honestly? You know, how can I praise this team with any credibility if I can't honestly critique them? And so that's unfortunately where we're at. So anyway, I give huge credit to Dater for calling that out because it's, it, we might say things, we might paint the Sharks in a horrible light because they've played horribly and we might paint them in like the best light ever because they played out of their mind spectacular. Fact is, we're calling out the elephant in the room. We are recognizing the obvious. We're realists. So if the Sharks were ever to tell us, well, we didn't like what you said earlier about Kevin LeBanc being in the doghouse, and so we're not going to give you access to talking to Kevin LeBanc or whatever. You know, I'm not saying that's ever happened. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying if it did happen, I'd be pretty fucking tilted. I don't know, jerk. Am I wrong? I don't know. I I kind of take the stance of like, I'm just going to say whatever I believe in. And if people don't like it, then, you know, what I have to say is not for those people. There you go. Yeah. How dare you be honest, sir? No, you know what? <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, like this is, this is, a, you know, yes. Like, is there a degree to which we've. Oh, we don't gotten... need to pile on, but you still need to ag uh, still acknowledge reality. 
No, and 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 here's the thing, like you know, we're like at the end of the day, like this is just a hobby for us. <laughs> and if you if you enjoy it, that's awesome. And if you don't enjoy it, then that's fine too. Like if you're one of those people who is tired of the negativity, which to a degree I'm tired of the negativity. Uh, as, a, as am I. But it's a, but if you it's the if you want to hear going, some more, dude, it's the idea of going. So the Sharks won one of three games as well. I can't believe you talked about the Sharks losing two games. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. You should have only talked about the one win. Yeah. Well, then listen to another podcast, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, we're going to talk about all of it. And uh, speaking of which, the Sharks are going to play four this coming week, hosting the Devils. That's going to be a toughie. Oh, and then the Stars. Wow. Okay, just like, you know, top of the Central. Although them in Winnipeg, they've been kind of dancing back and forth, doing a little uh, soiree. But it starts a five-game roadie beginning with back-to-backs next weekend against Columbus, like literally the worst team in the East. And then, oh, Boston, the best team in the NHL. What fun that shall be. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, yeah, the Sharks are going to go 1-3 this week. Uh, the good news is next Sunday is the last after dark takeover for the Pucknologists. So... We're going to be on a little earlier than our normal 7 o'clock time. Probably going to be like 6.30, 6.35, somewhere in that neck of the woods. All I know is that Jerk is like, wait, we're going to go on earlier? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Christmas. Hey, now. So those three games, uh, remember to check out the post-game show after everyone. It's going to have Puck Guy, Ian, Landy, Dana, Mark, who knows? There might even be a special guest. So on Twitter, you can follow him at hockey underscore jerk. Hit me up at a, actually don't, but I'm just going to tell you, don't hit me up. But if you want to on Twitter, AJ underscore strong, but as always hit the subscribe button. If you're on the YouTube channel for us, leave your take in the comment section of the video. If you weren't able to join us live, but remember you can always find us on those social media channels. If for whatever reason it floats your boat, we're even on TikTok. Uh, Puck guy runs that shit. I'm not going to touch it with a 10 foot pole, but if that's your jam, there you go. We're on it. If you want to join the Discord, where the party never stops, hit up. Literally our, never stops. Literally, literally never, never, it, ever, it's ever. It's happening never. right now as the show is happening. Yeah, right. <laughs> so hit up Hockey Jerk on the Twitter machine at hockey underscore jerk or the jerky email. Hockeyjerk10 at gmail.com. So with that, uh, Jerk, uh, I don't know, final thoughts, last words, or just shut this shit down and we go to discard and party. Yeah, I got a guy on the other line about some white walls, so we should get out of here. Hey now. So we thank you for listening, hanging with us this week, and in the immortal words of Hockey Jerk, say it. Say it, baby. Just say it. Say it. See you next Sunday. (laughs)